All right, ladies and gents. Um, listen, I've been around this game a long time. I've played games. I've watched games for a very long time. But there's one thing that I'm very much aware is a thing that I have not really covered much in my casting. And there's these lobbies that have been around for years where someone labels it as no attack certain period of time. And what we have here is a game on West Africa with Empire Wars where they start in feudal. And it is a no attack 60 minute game. Of course, let me know if you've ever seen one of these. I've seen them hosted all the time. I even played in them, but I never saw it with Empire Wars or on a, like a world map. So this is unique. Um, anyways, we've got Mezzi CS here. Mezzi CS is unranked, playing as the Armenians. And then in the blue, we have VSim, who is 230 ELO, playing as the Spanish. And so far, unranked player has done a pretty good job of producing villagers. It does seem like the graphics are weird. Oh, wait a second. I think this map is, is ludicrous. Look how big it is! <laughs> Okay, so I think because of how big the map is, it screws up some of the graphics with Capture Age. Uh, there's a there's a memory I have of them saying something about that. But like, they're already, where are they? They are very far from each other. And then look how much more of the map there is. This map is huge. Okay, so let's actually inspect the map. Um, Honestly, <laughs> the majority of this map there's not a whole lot going on. <laughs> There's just a whole lot of nothingness. Um, it does seem like in the in the south, uh, well, the, obviously south you've got the water. But in the east is where things seem a little bit more plentiful. What's the pop limit for this game? I don't know. <laughs> I didn't think about that. It is very likely that this game is also like a thousand pop limit or something crazy so listen i'm gonna speed up because this is no attack 60 minutes red scout <laughs> yo red if you find blue congratulations look at the mini map red is scouting to the best of his ability to find the enemy and what about blue blue Ooh, blue is sending units different directions. Blue's even sending vil- Whoa, the host has a plan, guys. Look at that. The host has a plan. Obviously, if you're behind an economy, you in theory have time to catch up. Red is going to build the siege workshop in the very corner of the map. That's interesting. Red is going <laughs> to- Whoa, dude. Red is making a journey to the north. Yo, this is sick. So, Red doesn't know he's passing by Blue's economy. But we are going to have a sneak base from Red in the north. And we are going to have a sneak base from Blue in the north. Huh? Also, these guys, I would say, are playing very good for the information we have on them. Now, of course, if you're Red, as he's sending a whole army of warrior priests this way, of course, if you're unranked, um, that, that could mean you're really good at the game and just haven't played, like, ranked 1v1s yet, right? Like, maybe he plays only team games. I don't have that much information here. Look at the amount of warrior priests moving around. Uh, this is a lot of action. Now, I don't know what they're accomplishing. Maybe he's looking for relics. It's gonna be so much work. He's an imp? Oh, okay, we got someone being trolled here. Well, there's no ELO requirement. Wait, what? Is this turbo? Are they cheat codes? How are they doing this? What is this? Okay. Somebody... Red is, is a solid player who's maybe joined Blue's lobby. And he, what, what is this? I mean, Blue's not doing too bad either. Blue's got more vills than him. Blue's on the way to imp. I guess it is. It might be turbo. Guys, it might be turbo. They're collecting resources very quickly. I think I could explain it. Yo, he's putting the relics in the corner. Oh, is he going to castle it too and protect these? This is really cool. Oh, God, don't destroy your own castle. Wow. All right. So I assumed blue is the host, but it almost seems like red is. What is this? There's a villager in the transport ship. 
Man, I wish I knew who the host was here. If you had to guess, guys, would you say that blue is the one who hosted this or red? I'm leaning towards red. It'd be interesting if the relic countdown started. There's no way you get all the relics, though. Red is sailing around the map. Man, this map is cool. We are at the halfway point of when players can attack, by the way. What is it? Blue knows stuff, too. Blue guts over here. Man, this is these guys have done their research. Have they played each other before? How does Blue know that's there? I wonder if these guys know each other. Blue snagged one relic, by the way. So there's no relic victory then. Holy crap. Blue is going to build up. Wait, so Blue knows red is down there? Yeah, Blue's going to build up a big old base. How is blue 230 elo? And by the way, I've all but confirmed this is turbo mode. Turbo mode, you collect resources three times faster. You build everything faster. It's, it's, something's wacky with the settings here. There's no way they'd have this eco on this vil count without turbo. Wow, red made a church here. Interesting. And a TC here. Well, listen, I played these games lots, and I suck ranked, but you get good just playing unranked games like this. It's turbo. Ooh, we've got insights. Well, you know, a big thing about ranked is pressure, right? Like, pressure because players are close, and there's all these things happening. These chill games, these chill lobby boom games, there's a lot of players who play these games who don't necessarily play a lot of ranked, too. So far, they have honored the rules of not attacking for 60 minutes, which I appreciate. But what? Red. They must have the 60-minute treaty on, too, by the way. There is an in-game treaty. Red. Okay, this is camping, bro. Sure, you're not attacking, but, like, what do you think this is? Wait, hold on. There was war. There was fighting. Technically not war, okay? Technically not war. That is... Um, just a mere, uh, construction rights issue. Uh, <laughs> uh but no, I, I heard an attack signal, I thought. What? <laughs> Look at what Red is doing! Look at what Red is doing! Look at this castle th situation. Red is nine relics. I assume Blue sees that the opponent is here. Oh, wow, Blue can't see that. Whoa. Blue still, they're both trying to get relics here. Okay. Can we appreciate everyone? The scouting from these two. This is, these guys are great. This is sick. Look at the vision. Wait, is that Gaia? No, that's red. Map is huge, right? I wouldn't scout this much. I like how red is a town center here and somehow missed that blue is a whole military base built up in the middle. So they can fight, what, in 10 minutes? Okay, let's speed up a little bit more. We'll go two times speed. So it's weird. I heard an attack signal, but nothing's auto-attacking. So I am, again, assuming there's a treaty. And when the treaty's off at 60 minutes, all hell's going to break loose. Any buildings that are next to enemy buildings or units are going to attack each other. I think it's a fair guess that maybe... Red damaged himself with onagers. Yeah, he did actually uh, some of his... Um, No, none of his castles are weakened. I don't know. I'm noticing that red might soon go over 200 pop. But it does say 200 out of 200 pop. Now, I'm going to assume capture age doesn't go above 200 pop. So maybe that's wrong. Or maybe red will delete villagers for population space. It, if you look at the minimap, you'd think that Red's castles are pretty close to the main base, but they're really not. I wonder if Red is planning on giving up the rest of the base. Okay, yeah, here, here's my prediction. Red is trying to spread out in different angles so he can attack from around Blue's base. That's the strategy. But then part of the strategy, too, is if you lose this, you have all your relics safe in the corner... And you have your real, like, finish the game, hold on, eco here. 
So this area is the key for red, which is why you got the relic so early. Blue does not know that red has that sneaky base in the corner. And when he finds that, he might crap himself because that is quite a line of castles there. But blue definitely knows that red is here. Hmm. I mean, and is making elite conquistadors. Doesn't have any blacksmith upgrades right now, which is a concern, but elite conquistadors are nuts. I don't think you need that many blacksmith upgrades for those to be good. And you can see a similar thing, right? Like, blue knows that red has a base here, so now we're seeing blue build another base. Red knows all about this, though. That vision's gonna be helpful. And I think most of the relics have been collected now. It looks like there's a couple more out and about. I Anyone else really enjoying this, though? This is fun, man. See, my experience in half of the no-attack 40-minute lobbies when I was growing up is there's always one guy that would break the rule, right? Like, I would join someone's lobby titled that, and then he would attack me before 40 minutes. I was too trusting. So, you know, I, I was kind of expecting someone to break the rules here. The turbo aspect obviously makes this a lot more fun for these guys because they'll have resources to play around with. Turbo also affects how much gold you get from relics too. So red's not going to need much gold. Look at red sell resources right now for gold too. So it is 200 pop. Huh. No one's got above it. Hmm. Decisions, decisions, decisions. Blue is making navy. Uh, hard for me to tell from where. Oh, blue is making navy here. Blue is also going to make trade cogs. Okay, blue sees this now. That's a real power play to, to make trade cogs and trade with the enemy. Yeah, so look, he's sitting his navy here. So when this turns and they're fighting each other, he's hoping he destroys the dramans. Good awareness from Blue to realize that. Wait, is he about to go? No, he's pop capped. Okay, so he can't go above 200 pop. That's bad for him. Some of his techs are in queue there. I think the Dramans would win. Red is no defense for the starting eco. Maybe it's calculated though. Maybe you you let the you lure the opponent into a false sense of security. We got three minutes. I'm gonna do normal game time once we get there. Thank you everyone for watching. It is the year 2024. I am watching two random people I've never heard of play no attack 60 minute games. And people are watching this. There's people interested in this. What is my life? Wait, Red got spies or something. Oh, no, I didn't. I'm stupid. Never mind. I thought he did. It looked like it. Okay. I think Armenians get siege on the So that would make sense. Okay, let's slow it down. We got a minute countdown, people. Hey, pretend this is, uh, I don't know, New Year's Eve or something, and we'll get a countdown going. Thank you, Sem. Thank you, Zarquan. Thank you, Grim. Sunshine, uh, in it, Skeletti. Thank you for the primes, resubs, subs, smiles. Countdown uh, starts 30 seconds here in a moment. Red noticed this and moved away. Multitasking is absolutely insane here from these two. And it's all going to go down. Uh, where it's, is it going to go down? Kind of everywhere. Red's warrior priests are ready to turn as well. We got five, four, three, two, one, zero. Sorry, it's fast speed and bam! The warrior priests attack. The navy attacks. The towers and the castles attack. And then the conquistadors are on the move. All right. I forgot it was fast speed. So this this has really been ticking quickly here. Um, Listen, I'm going to bet on red. Red seem to know a lot about the map. Red has more relics. Dramans are also insanely strong. Red's got a really nice position. The warrior priest raiding the farmers as well. Huge. Blue doesn't seem to notice that. And blue is also just continuing to funnel in things up here. This is going to be a lot of wasted pop. Blue's attack needs to work out for him here. And he is on the way. Um, now, he did make a Bombard Tower here, and he sees the walls. Or, like, the Wall of Castles, anyways. So he must have an idea that there's things over here. But the gloves are officially off. 
Keep in mind, both players have gold income. Both players will have relics. So the gold shouldn't be a big issue. But I do not have confidence that Blue's going to be able to use this army to take out this massive fortress that Red has built up right now. Unless Red doesn't realize, of course. Which, of course, is possible, because there's a lot of things happening. Fortified Priests. They're going to be killed off by the Halps. Fortified Priests are actually really good against Halps, though, so... There's no Kings or anything, like in a Regicide game. Blue sits in Red's new economy. The fact that Blue found this is epic. The Red's going forward to trap this down from Blue. Blue backs away. Blue's starting to take out the castles. Um, Red's new base. Maybe in other games he's played, this has gone unspotted. But the fact that Blue found this is a pretty big deal. Units are getting distracted by villagers, though. And the villagers are tempting them right into the castle fire. It's a slaughter! But the Trebs still take out the buildings. The same will happen here, too, with Red against Blue. Navy situation continues to be brutal. These dramas continue to get uh, kills. Um, not really seeing some action here. The warrior priests have killed 35 villagers. Red is down quite a bit of eco here. And now we have uh, composite bowmen and champions. Ooh, that's a fun army composition. But finally, we are going to see red defend this. Now, I think when the dust settles, um, I think we're going to see a castle in this spot. I think it it troubles Red deeply that there is a gap there. Uh, Red might even repair every castle that was weakened here. In order for this to feel complete for Red, that castle needs to be standing. We might even see a new TC. Red's going to have to sort that out. The warrior priests, not the fortified priests, are still just... They're doing more damage than any of Red's military has done. Honestly, these things are insane. And Blue has not... Blue doesn't have a single castle in his main eco! Still somehow has 22,000 food. Because turbo things. So. I guess, does he have supremacy? Yeah, I guess if he didn't have supremacy, this would be worse. I didn't think about that. Red making a push. Blue is hoping to hold the position. Blue's gonna lose some of these trebs, but... Uh, well, it's right about now. I would like to say the words. What have I done? Um, <laughs> what, what have I done? <laughs> I mean, red is ahead, but blue is never going to die. Uh, we do have someone in my chat that says, actually, uh, QMP, can you give me information on the players again? Uh, someone's given us some information on the players and then the chat just went off the screen. I wouldn't mind context on the players. Freaking warrior priest continues to just wreck. Blue at 60 minutes and still didn't get all blacksmith upgrades. It's, it's a painful one. Okay. V-Sim is Brazilian. They frequently played another Brazilian named VNC Sim, who is about 1,200 ELO. Might be their Smurf account. Okay. Red has played 2,800 games, but no ranked. Their ELO seems to be, up, be about 1,400 in team games and some other unranked games in AW2 Insights. Yeah, that doesn't surprise me. Red seems like a guy who doesn't enjoy a number defining him, right? He gets enjoyment over sneaky plays and big late-game battles. V-Sim? Not coming off... Like, V-Sim's played great, but it does feel like this is very overwhelming for him in many ways. I... Okay, question, chat. Because this map is so large. Like, look at this. Look at the distance. Red is going to have to travel even get to here. Can we speed it up at various points, okay? Like, various points. Like, right now, you know, if there's going to be a fight now, I'm not going to do it. But if they're not actively engaging, then I speed it up a little bit just to, you know, keep things moving. Let's, let's do that. Not going to do it now, though, because Blue's ready. Blue's also going to get heavy cab archer. Spanish cab archers aren't the worst. But what is the worst for blue right now is the lack of blacksmith upgrades. So, you know, red defended from the attack, cleared up blue's forward base. 
which is great. Reds, Warrior Priests continue to wreak havoc on Blue's economy. But Blue has resources. And Blue is now in Red's economy. And Red is in here. So Red is going to drop down below 100 villagers. Blue could destroy all of this. And this might just be how this goes. This is actually somewhat realistic warfare here, isn't it? Because, like, you know, in the past, if your army was out of position, if you moved all your army out to go, you know, take a battle somewhere, and they happened to show up because you didn't receive intel that they were coming to wreck your village, you get back home later, and, you know, just all your friends and family and children are dead, and then that's a pretty sad situation, I imagine, right? So these guys haven't received, I don't know what, a carrier pigeon? Right? It was the form of communication. Maybe there's a scout that should be passing information along. They just haven't received that information yet. And so Blue's right back in this game because of this massive fight here. Now, I don't know how realistic freaking warrior priests are. Like, this is probably, uh, this is stretching the, the path. I don't know how many, how many priests took up arms and started axe-murdering villagers on farms. I mean, it probably happened once because that's just the way the world works, but to this extent, I'm going to assume no. Um, but, uh, you know, I, again, I, I've told you guys many times, I don't, I don't read, right? I'm just on this game all the time. So, um, this position is going to be lost. Man, I wish I knew locations in West Africa. <laughs> Whatever this location is, uh, I got to pull up a map. Uh, conquistadors for blue have gone home. Uh, again, it took them some time to hear word of the pillaging that was happening. And Red's Trebs and his, uh, composite bowmen, they are gonna have to move somewhere at some point. Blue maybe wants to make a position, or take a position over here against Red. I think Red's idea behind making these TCs is, like, you just always have villagers somewhere else. It does also feel like they both value the north very highly right now. Hmm. All right. Uh, Krugel, thank you for the five months. Thank you, Saletti, for the 37 months. Thank you, uh, everybody, for watching this. And uh, predictions on who wins this, guys. Have you had to make one? Let me hear it. I uh, think the Spanish are way better than the Armenians. I think the mobility is also so useful. But red has 10 relics and red has 30k gold in the bank and might be a long game but i think that that's what red is is pretty much banking on here um i i think a good strategy here is for blue to bring vills and build forward bases i think it this whole moving your army around the map thing it it makes life very difficult Red is going to wheel right into a... Oh, no. He sees it. He sees the Bombard Tower. Okay. Hmm. Red does have a bit of a force here, but it's nothing major. Blue continues to slowly take down Red here in the north. And Blue continues to, to push towards this position. All right. <clears throat> I've been to Cameroon on the coast. The Seme Beach is beautiful. Black sandy beach with overlooking volcano. Did you see conquistadors on that beach? Because if you did, you, you probably wouldn't have made it out alive. We've got conquistadors here. I guess this is a bit off the coast. Conquistadors, paladins, bombard cannons, and one onager maybe to take care of some trees. Red, of course, out of position. But Red maybe considers himself in position. Because red is pushing blue's base. But, guys, the conquistadors are wrecking. And if blue sees... Does he see the relics? Please tell me blue sees the relics. Oh, he doesn't see them! That explains everything. Well, the last time this happened, blue accidentally ran into... Oh! Oh, he noticed it! He noticed it! Yeah, blue just ran into the line of castles. Yeah, this is... Uh... This is not going to be great for you here, Blue. Last time, Blue took out one castle and lost everything. This time, he just lost everything. Okay. But he did kill a lot, and he did get information. And 
Again, very realistic warfare and all. There are probably going to be thousands upon thousands upon thousands of kills and deaths in this game. Because these guys, all about the realistic warfare. All right. Lots of conquistadors at home protecting farms that... I mean, this is a wasteland at this point. There's honestly not many villagers on these jobs anymore. Will Blue look over here and say, hmm, what is that? Castles, by the way, have 50 kills. Where did Red's army go? Oh, it's here. Okay. I like Rams. Siege Ram is really good to mix in for both of them, actually. It just tanks a lot of damage. Uh, Onager would be incredible for Blue right now. Like, two or three Onagers and Red's whole army goes splat. We'll see how these units do now. The Composite Bowmen ignore armor, so I guess not having armor isn't a big issue here. But, you know, Blue's Paladins still have a decent amount of attack. Red's micering very nicely, though. I don't know if it's nice enough for him to win the fight if Blue continues to produce Paladins. Actually, Blue is running out of gold. Blue is done running dangerously low on gold right now. Yeah, that's bad. Composite Bowmen are shredding. They will die, but they still get good value. Castle goes down. Trebs will go down. And Red, he thought about this a long time ago with those relics. Hmm. This area still seems very important. So I've noticed that Red always had demos in queue. Red was just sneakily adding demos here to try and take out the ships. I don't know if he ever got the unique tech for the Armenians, though. Yeah, some players in these games, if they feel like they lack... Like, if you feel like you lack the skill or even the units, outlasting opponents is a big thing in these types of games. Uh, we see that... I, I think it's a, a not a strategy that I highlight on my channel all that much because we just don't cast scenario games or... Uh, the, the, the no attack games, but you know, sneaky trade just relics always a big deal here, but blue could in theory find some, I think what blue doesn't have that red has, and I'm noticing it pretty clearly blue doesn't reboom well, right red has like red's always adding more villagers which is a key thing in, in late stages of any game so you know how I go choo choo this is more like like i'll see you in three years guys i could leave right i could live my life for three years i could come back and the rams are going to be just in front of red's castles they won't even be there this is taking forever they oh my god oh people pick it up pick it up put your foot on the pedals here it's also kind of funny because these these bowmen are attacking the ram not fake yellow, thanks for the four months. <laughs> right, question is, are people subbing because of this content? Or are they, they subbing despite in, in spite of this content? Like, which one is it? It, it? I think there might be even a fair amount of people subbing for sympathy right now. Like this this is what this guy does? This is his like this is his existence? Oh god, we gotta we gotta help him out, honestly. Send a couple subs his way. We feel bad for him. Red. Beautiful castles. There's something about the way these gates... Like, look at the... Okay, the gates and the door, the entryways in the castle. Entryway this way. Entryway this way. Entryway this way on the siege workshop. Entryway this way. Oh, there's something about that that makes me happy. Okay, did the rams make it here? No, they're on the way. Tell me blue clicks these rams at the monastery. That would crack me up. If he clicks everything at that freaking monastery. Let's go, 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 let's go. This is why he has so many. Go, 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 go. Don't destroy your own rams. Go. Go. Move it. Move it, people. Go, 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 go. I just want to know where is he targeting? They're headed towards the corner. Go! Get the relics! Go! 
Ah, oh, he's not gonna make it. Oh, he's going for the TC. Get something, anything. Man, I mean, Spanish do have siege ram guys, so you can spend a thousand food, which blue definitely has to upgrade those rams. But yeah, red doesn't care about anything else. Red just camps in this corner. This is his win condition, and this was his plan the whole time. I wonder if blue gives up. Blue hasn't made many units that don't cost gold. If blue can't make conquistadors, if blue can't make paladins anymore, I feel like, I mean, maybe blue would quit. Then again, you you did invest 60 minutes into this game without even fighting. So it feels like the action has just started. Red's just going to outlast the opponent. And again, red's got little colonies all around ready to build up if red has a moment. Blue. This is where spreading out the TCs actually makes it really hard to recover. Blue has all these conks here. Blue, are you here, pal? Okay, blue left the game. Blue is no longer here, but also red got spies. Guys, red can see everything. Red spent however much gold that was, because uh, I saw red had 30k gold. It's 200 gold per villager. So uh, someone do the math. 79 villagers have 200, whatever that was. He spent it. Now he sees everything the opponent can do. And blue, upon hearing that, or upon losing the freaking army there, left the game. Blue, what are we doing? All right, let's speed up a little bit. Let's just, maybe Blue had to go to the bathroom and he wanted to be courteous and didn't want to pause. Nope, nope, Blue's just not here. Okay, um, well, we have an AFK player. He may plan on returning, but I will speed it up slightly because even with all vision, even with Blue being away from the computer, it might still take Red an hour to destroy the enemy. Actually, you know what? It will take over an hour. There's a lot of things out here. Um, let's just uh, let let's just keep it going here. Let's just keep it going. R R this is going to be a lot to destroy. You need to kill every unit. You need to kill every building. I'd still like to pretend that we this could be some type of decent content. Guys, why are so many people going AFK? This week. I have encountered a lot of people doing this. Is it to spite the enemy? It's not that big a deal, guys. Y you can lose. It's all it's all good. Wait, I lose all the time. It's all good. It, Red didn't do anything wrong. Red was smart. A triple monastery now. I don't get why people do this. Don't do this, all right? This is a, not a T90 approved strategy. Unless you had really bad... Mexican food the previous night and you can't really handle spice and you had to run for it, okay? Not speaking from experience, but you know, maybe maybe this was uh, you know, an emergency situation for Blue and not a question of his character. But now I'm supposed to sit here after a pretty solid, interesting game and I'm supposed to just go supersonic speed and watch this guy defeat everybody? What is this? I mean... I also don't think Red's going to be complaining. I think Red's going to enjoy this. Actually, let, let me ask that. For those that have been in this position when someone AFKs against them, is it an enjoyable experience for you to slowly wipe them off the face of the earth? I actually think for Red, Red's enjoying this. I actually think Red would be would enjoy this less if the opponent was here. Oh, wait. Blue is back. Blue is back. Blue is back. Wait, and now Red says GG. Okay, so red... Hold on, we have battle. Red is back. Red is back. Uh, blue is back, sorry. Um, so red saying GG for the opponent, which... Might just lead to blue going AFK again earlier. Um, but... Oh god, we've got... Okay, we've got forward churches. And we've got trebs here from red as well. So red's got the attack coming through this area, where he continues to shred the paladins with this unit. And then he's also got an attack here. He's even building a castle here. Interesting. Hmm. So I have memories of when I was a noob and people went AFK. And like, to a certain extent, it was kind of fun to be able to destroy them off the map. But 
there's also... I guess there's, like, kind of levels to it. Like anything in life. It always depends, right? There's levels to it. And, like... Yeah, okay. Th th that's acceptable. Blue maybe stepped away. I don't know the reasoning. He fought back one more time. It didn't work. And now he's out of the game. And and red wins the game. And that was actually pretty interesting. And actually content worthy, I, can, I think. Because look at this. So what? Red said... Uh, someone said that red plays all the time with these settings. Maybe was the host of this game. I don't exactly know. Look at this base guy. Th this is crazy. Castle Siege Workshop. Castle Gate. Castle Siege Workshop. Castle Gate. Castle Siege Workshop. Castle Gate. Castle, 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 Castle. And who knows how this would have played out if Red didn't put the relics here. Like, that was actually a very big part of this whole strategy. Sneaking the relics. Now, I think if you're the host of this no attack 60 minute game, I think that you might know the map very well. It seemed like Red understood the map, but still, that's part of it. If you're joining someone's lobby, you're playing under their rules. Look at that. Blue didn't play bad economically. It wasn't too far off, but the relics, 11 relics brought in 25,000 gold. That is why he picked the Armenians. That is why he had the warrior priests out there. And um, ultimately, you can take bad fights. He took good fights, but ultimately, you can take bad fights. You can you can last. You can research spies if you have that much gold collected on the map. So um, obviously, very different from what I typically cast. This map was freaking huge. But um, I've been thinking recently about maybe highlighting more of these unique players. There's a lot of people who play scenarios. There's a lot of players who play wacky settings. Think Fat Slob, right? Like Fat Slob is still back in the old version of the game still playing a uh, 1v1 Black Forest. And certain people just like to play the game in different ways. And I think what makes Age of Empires special is it doesn't have to be ranked. It doesn't have to be standard. There's so many different ways to, to play the game. And you don't have to look too far to find unique names who play it in a way that maybe people could appreciate. So, um, yeah, that's true. You can see Red's castle wall from space, everybody. Look at it. That's pretty wild. You, you can kind of make out the rest of the map. But the castle wall, you can see from space. GG. I, I'm a little surprised that they played 200 pop. Every lobby I've seen from this in the past, it always seems like it's four or 500 population. But that's good. It probably would have, uh, you know, melted some PCs. And there would have been some problems there. So if you enjoyed this on YouTube, uh, you know, let me know. I'll keep an eye out. Maybe there's some players out there. Uh, sift through my emails. People are notifying me all the time of certain games, certain names that are playing. But uh, yeah, if you want to see more or if you enjoyed it or have any feedback, of course, leave a comment on what was a unique upload. Let's say that.